moment. We've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code, and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. Good day. It is so good to be with you today and to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ together and to know that he is worthy. Lord has touched my heart that I feel that I need to take us today as we join together in the word and to know that he is the answer. I find myself so strongly being directed into Isaiah, the prophet, in his writings of Isaiah chapter 52. I believe the Lord is speaking to us to do two things. Awake and arise. So that would be the title of what I speak on for the next few moments. Is to awake and to arise. I believe right now that is what the Lord has touched you with. To awaken as it would seem to be either out of a sleep or even a slumber. That things had gotten to where it's just become either mundane, complacent. But I believe there is a stirring that is going on from the Holy Spirit that is bringing an awakening. And it is bringing in us to arise and to go forward, to be sober, to be diligent. To know that there is a call of what God has spoken into us. And through the power of the Holy Spirit to be victorious. So in Isaiah chapter 52 beginning with verse 1. We read awake. Awake. Put on your strength. O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments. O Jerusalem. The holy city for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. And here's the second word that I said that the first was awake and then the second was what? Well, here it is at the end uh, in, in verse two. It says, shake yourself from the dust. Then it says, arise, sit down, O Jerusalem, and loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe that through this awakening, I believe that we have come to a place where it said, shall no longer the uncircumcised and the unclean will come to you, but you are to shake yourself from the dust and arise. Hallelujah. Oh, I sense the presence of the Holy Ghost in this place today that you no longer need to set asleep no longer are you to be dormant no longer are you to feel I just can't because we have an I can God we have a Lord that Apostle Paul even spoke of when he said how he felt concerning him in Philippians 4 13 when he said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I need you to know that you have been awakened today. 
And you have been given strength to arise today and to know right now, right this moment, that He is speaking into you and that there is time moving forward. What was a stumbling block is now a stepping stone. What was your weakness is now His strength. What was your defeat is now His victory because He is in this place through the power of the blood of Jesus that He shed so that He has resurrected from a borrowed tomb. And He is now in and upon us through the promise that has been fulfilled of the power of the Holy Ghost. The Word of the Lord continued. It says, For thus says the Lord in verse 3 of Isaiah 52, You have sold yourselves for nothing. You shall be redeemed without money. Hallelujah. For thus says the Lord God, My people went down at first into Egypt to dwell there. Then the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore what I have, what have I here, says the Lord, that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them, make them well, says the Lord. My name is blasphemed continually every day. Therefore my people shall know my name. Somebody say praise the Lord. That your day of what it seems those that had been given rule over you in a place and they were making you well. But your name, even though by those it was blasphemed continually every day, there was a, in the tongue there is power, yes, of life, but there is also of death. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you today that there through that speaking of life is what is being released. Because he said in verse 6 of Isaiah 52, Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel again the presence of the Holy Ghost moving and flowing in this place for you today. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, Your God reigns. I knew as well when the Lord spoke to me at age 15 of a calling to preach His word. And it is still just as real, just as fire of burning, and the zeal to go forward. So I'm here to tell you, it's fresh upon you as well to be lifted up, to be renewed, revived, restored, and to go forward. He continues to speak about who those that proclaim peace and who brings glad tidings of good news, who proclaims salvation, who says, design your God reigns. Listen to what it says. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion and break forth into joy. Sing together your waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. So what are we to do? He tells us here in verse 11, Isaiah 52, Depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing, go out from the midst of her, be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. I'm telling you, there is a burden lifted and a yoke that has been made light and to know that the Lord is directing the steps. If I've ever known that I'm in the perfect will of God, I know it today fresh and anew that His perfect will is moving and directing. All we need to do is to keep our hands on the plow and not looking back. Don't let those things try to so easily beset us. 
But we recognize, as it says in verse 12, For you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Isn't it awesome to know that God is protecting us? He is leading us as we are following, but He also has us protected from behind. Oh, He's not having to be from behind us, but He has ministering angels that He has sent that encampeth round about them that fear Him and worship and follow after the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, we are here to awaken. We are here called to arise we are here called to go forth. Jesus Christ is here to give you what you have need of. Oh my, what Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. What Jesus did, paying the price. Here it is being foretold what he was going to go through. Well, I'm here to tell you, the day came, Jesus showed up. He fulfilled what Isaiah the prophet had given hundreds of years earlier. Jesus fulfilled it. And now 2,000 years after Jesus has fulfilled in that time frame of 2,000 years within that range of some, sort, of some sort, I'm here in this place to let you know as Jesus has fulfilled, it is now ministering among us. What is, Pastor? Oh, I'll tell you, verse 4 of Isaiah 53, Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted, but He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who would declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was put, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Oh, church, let me tell you, Jesus is here, and because of him paying the price, he took on sin so that we could be set free from sin. For all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. But when we confess our sins and believe that He died and was buried and rose again, and we accept Him as Lord and Savior, then He forgives us, and we know today that He has lifted that load of guilt. And we are now not in captivity, but we are in freedom. Hallelujah! Somebody worship the Lord with me today. I feel like this place is filled with people of worship, and praise as we are together giving God glory. You need to be in touch with somebody to get a hold of this message so they can awaken and arise today. So that they can understand that Jesus has come and paid the price. And right now they, through Him, are able to be set free. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, uh -huh, hallelujah, there is liberty. 
and to know that we are able to lift Him. Isaiah 54, the next chapter. I started in Isaiah 52. I highlighted 53. In Isaiah 54, He began to say, say Sing, O barren, when you awake, when you arise, then you're going to be able to sing. So you awake, you arise, but verse 1 of Isaiah 54, Sing, O barren. You who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Oh, I'm here to tell you, there's ones that want to take you out. There's ones that want to remove you. Perhaps we feel the same way. Ones want to take me out and remove me, perhaps. But I'm here to tell you, only God can give the steps and order them. And I believe till He says to remove or to be able or however He allowed. He didn't let Job be removed. He may have let him go through a lot of stuff. I don't even know how I could even, can even equal myself to someone like Job. I don't even know how to attempt to do that. But I just say, Lord, all I know to do is one thing. Give myself with my open heart to remain as humble and submissive and obedient to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That He is moving and flowing. You want to hear these words? He said, you have... He said, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. I'm telling you, it is so easy, it seems, for ones just to speak whatever they think. But I want to be swift to hear. James 1.19, I want to be slow to speak. And Lord, I want to be slow to wrath. So that we can be able to know that His Word is being fulfilled right now. Look at what it is. In verse 2 of Isaiah 54, Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords. And strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand. Oh, I'm speaking. I feel a prophetic word in the people's lives today. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore, for your Maker, uh huh? Hallelujah. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Church, you got to hear this. He is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says the Lord God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory for His presence today. Forevermore. Father, I come to you right now. You have filled this place with your glory. You are in this place. There are some that are taking this time in of this service, of this message, of this worship. They didn't know that you were going to be there in this moment of this way. But God, you had an accepted time. You had a time of salvation. You had a place, Lord. And right now, this is that place of where they are being delivered, set free, healed. Even their emotions, their minds. Someone in deep depression is being delivered right now. Some that have been diagnosed with bipolar is no longer because God has become the balance. And He has brought those two extremes into Him. It's, it's like the man who found himself living in the tombs. It was beyond his control. But it wasn't beyond the Lord's control. And when the Lord came in the presence of that man in the tombs, 
He came to him and what was in him that seemed to have the control of him spoke out to the Lord. But I'm here to tell you when the Lord asked him his name and when he had to identify himself, I don't know what you are dealing with today, but in the presence of the Lord, it is identifying itself and Jesus Christ is setting you with liberty. It's setting you with deliverance. It's setting you with knowing that He has spoken and now the right mind. Now you are feeling whole again. You are feeling complete again. You are feeling that you can live again. Because Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Oh, hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Today is my prayer. Oh, we got to end this thing. But till we meet again, you continue to know that Jesus Christ not only died, but he rose again. And God is for you and not against you. So you are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Somebody say right now, as we close, I am victorious. I am victorious in Jesus Christ. God bless you.